So in this video, we're going to talk about smart switches and why they should be a part of every smart home. And do a little smart switch ASMR. Which one do you choose? And is the sky falling with all these smart switches? Why do I need them? Let's roll the clips. Guess we better hurry. Green, no traffic. Sometimes you just need simple in life. A simple button to toggle your lights. We have all these voice assistants that can help us out, but sometimes they just don't work out that great. Or maybe you have someone else sleeping next to you and you don't want to yell out across the room. Okay, turn off the bedroom lights. Okay, turning off 33 lights. <sighs> okay, turn off the lights. Sure, turning 49,921 uh, lights off. Oh, so I get this question asked all the time. What smart switches do I pick and why do I need them and what do I use? And I prefer to use smart switches that are on the Wi-Fi and they are flashed with third-party firmware such as Tasmodo and ESP Home. And well, wait, is that going to clog up my network? No. Don't let the naysayers tell you otherwise. I have a ton of smart switches and smart devices on my network, I have zero issues because these switches and stuff, they're not watching Netflix. They're just sending on and off statuses and back and forth. So yeah, there is Z-Wave and Zigbee. You can use those switches and they won't be on your Wi-Fi, but, and they do come already ready to go, but they're usually a little more pricier and then you need a different hub to use them. And I like to use that Zigbee for that battery power device where Wi-Fi MQTT devices that are on batteries, that just sucks. So why should you flash yours with third-party firmware? Well, make it yours. Don't buy a device and have it be at the mercy of some other company that decides to deprecate the API or one day shutting you out or you can't use your device anymore, they don't wanna support it. Flash it, you can make it yours, you can use it with ever, whatever home automation software, Node-RED, Hubitat, OpenHab, Home Assistant, whatever it might be, since it is all local and it's yours, and you can put the firmware you want on it. And we're gonna show you how to do it all without having to do any type of soldering on most of the switches, and we're gonna let you listen to them because that's another thing you can't just look on the web and see when you're looking at all these various switches. Now I have started to dump a lot of my different notes in different questions that I do get a lot, such as what smart switches and how do I set them up and status lights and what products do I use. I'll put all that on my website and how to set things up. So definitely check out the link in the video description below. Yes, they are affiliate links, but you don't have to use them. You can go shop at all the stores that you want. But if you do, we do appreciate it. It helps bring different videos and products. What about the skies falling thing? Well, we're gonna get to that. This is the Treat Life SS01S. It's a single pole switch. Of course, it already has the little jumper wires that are attached to it, so you don't have to deal with any type of screw terminals. Some people may like that, some people may not. It's really easy to open. I found on the bottom, there's two notches down here. If you take a medium sized flathead screwdriver, you can stick it in there in one of those slots, like so, and then just simply twist and it will pop like that. And then you can take a spudger, go around the edge. You should see these two little notches. And I find that once you pull it up, It'll pop right open. Be careful, there is a wire connecting the inside to the faceplate front. That does have the little ESP Tuya module. So real simple, and you can see the pins are wide open, so you can solder this, you can jig it, however you wanna do to flash it. It's real simple, easy layout. Now for status LEDs, there is a red and white LED behind this little diffuser. They are controllable and they're not tied into the actual relays themselves. So you can do whatever you want with those status LEDs. 
Now, if you're looking for a jig and you don't have a 3D printer or can't find anybody locally to make you a jig, check the video description down below for my contact information as I have been making jigs from time to time. So this is that MJS01. It's the Martin Jerry single pole switch. And yeah, I did have this one in the wall and it did work great. We just switched it out for a dimmer or fan controller or something like that. So this one does have the jumper wires on it, just like the other switches. You could put your spudger in at the corner, slide it through and slide all the way up and it will pop open just like so. Pop right open. And the ESP8266, you can see the back of it right here. That's the antenna. You will need to remove the four screws if you are trying to get to the ESP chip to put the jig on it or whatnot. Now you can use these little holes on the back here for flashing as well if you want to do it just with some breadboard jumpers. The little LED right here, it is a red and blue LED. It's not tied to the relay and there's not a lot of travel with this button here, which I do like, and we do like the look of it. There's a small little button here that is tied to the actual reset line on the ESP chip. It just basically reboots the ESP. Now this is the Ghost Sun switch. Actually a company named Kesson actually makes these because we've seen these branded for several other companies such as KU LED and Tekken and well, Tekken did switch some of theirs to non-ESP. They've had several different hardware revisions of these. So I won't be opening this one because this is an older one I have, which probably is not going to match the current revision that's out there on the websites now. There is a Torx screw on the back of here. And of course, it does have the standard little jumper wires you typically see on the smart switches. And the later models had where you could have control of the two LEDs. Previous earlier models, you only had one status LED and then the second one was actually tied to the relay, unfortunately. But that's not the case anymore. This is the Treat Life three-way. Now they do have a single pole version of this. I just don't have it. It's pretty much the same as their other model that has the little slot in it for the LED. This one just has a little dimple and just twist it and you should see the two clips and you can pull it up and you'll notice right off the bat there's no wire connecting either so you don't have to worry about pulling it up. The only thing be careful when you are pulling it apart that you don't bend over this little connector right here so once you remove the four screws it simply lifts up and now you have the little board with the ESP chip here's one a little bit different still your standard smart switch you know you push the button and it turns the relay on and off but you'll notice there's no jumpers or anything on the unit itself. Now there is one design flaw that I found and several others did is if you shove the ground too far into this hole here, it will actually push the plate inside here off of the connector and it doesn't hurt anything except it you're none of the LEDs behind here light up. And that's what we're going to get to next. I did a full tear down and soldering and the whole nine yards to this switch. If you want to see that one, we did actually figure out all the pins inside and everything. Did the manual soldering because, of course, two-year convert wasn't working on it then. And sometimes you may not be working on this one. So we'll leave the link down below for this full tear down of this switch as well. But for the sake of this video, I did want to at least show you what was behind here because it is a cool switch and you can do a lot of automations with it because I actually did a video where I show my commute time to work on a Monday through Friday based on the color 
of the LEDs behind here being red, green, or yellow so I can determine if I need to hurry up and leave instead of lollygagging around in the morning. So it's just a little diffuser here with the two little buttons that push it. And these are all LEDs behind here, the multicolor LEDs. And they're just PWM, so you can set whatever color you want, combination, etc. And if you look down here, which goes in with this little triangle looking diffuser piece, there's actually three LEDs down here. Your red, blue, and green. So you can go ahead and set a red, blue, and green to this bottom piece as well. So you get six different LEDs on this thing plus the regular relay. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. It's the same little metal case. Pretty much the same housing on it. This one is branded by AO Coker. And same little terminals, the single pole switch. I did find one little difference that is pretty weird, or pretty neat, I guess you'll say, is there's three status lights, red, blue, and green behind here. So you can basically set whatever status you want for doing several different things, not just that the lights on or off or whatever. Now take this off, you just got to push these little teeth in and you can get the full faceplate off of here. Just be careful not to break those tabs. And just like that, there is the ESP chip. You can remove these four screws if you'd like to remove this plate off of here to give you more access to it. And these PCBs just stack on top of each other for the power supply, much like the other one. Now, this is a little different ESP chip. It says it's the ESP8266-S1. It looks like it's going to be the same exact one that I had in the breakdown of that colored faceplate one. And if we'll check out the video link down below. You can see all the pins if you'd like to solder to it and whatnot. Now, this is another brand name I've actually been very impressed with. Name of it is Eva Logic. You just use the three way in a single pole config, or you use it in a three way config. And it works very well with no rules and no special stuff because they do require a little bit different wiring, but it's not hard to do. And they have some wiring diagrams for you. So it's a pretty cool little switch. And I didn't find any really hardware issues with it. It does use the Smart Life app. And I did flash this wing using the Tuya Convert process as of the recording in this video. So, but of course, as we know, that could change at any time. So let's crack into this one and see. But there is going to be a standard ESP Tuya module based on the FCC pictures that I've looked at. So it looks like. They're doing the same as those AO Coker switches where you had to pop open and pull that out. And there's the rocker. Now they do also make a toggle. It's not normal. I haven't seen many smart switches that have the toggle like that. Now I do know they'd have some special bits. It's a triangle bit here. Now one thing I did find that was pretty cool with this switch is actually you could tell even though it did the same thing there's just one relay you could actually tell whether there was a up push or down push on it so you could do some interesting things you could actually use this as a dimmer control to maybe hold it down and dim some smart lights or basically you're just going to send commands to dim or brighten those smart lights so we'll just slowly peel this back. And yep, this all stays in one piece, which is good. All right, and this pops off. There's the Tuya module, wide open. Do the magic if you have to. And of course you do get the up and down buttons. Now this one's a little interesting one, but it's very useful because you can see it is a standard Decora and it has three buttons. And no, they don't call this a three gang. They call this a one gang because it's one switch wide, but it has three switches. And I haven't seen any other three button switches 
that are in a one gain configuration because actually I had, had to use before and it was a Shelly 2. Now if you've seen other switches where there's two or three relays in a single Decora one gain, definitely leave us a comment down below. I'd like to see some other switches like that. This just slides right off. Really simple. So they do have a little ribbon cable that attaches the face to the back. So be mindful of that, don't rip it off, but you can actually see here's the ESP chip, wide open, really easy, ready to go. Yeah, this one actually will fit and is made to fit in the standard North America one gang light switch box. Now why I say one gang, because all the other switches you could put four or five, whatever, how many wide you wanted to and just get a larger faceplate. Well, the problem with this one is this faceplate here is only going to fit in a spot where you have just one gang wide. Now they do make a model with just a single button. This is the dual button and they do make another model with three buttons. So it should pop right off. If you look closely here, they do all the work for you. You can just use some breadboard jumpers. It's 3.3 volts, ground, RX, TX. And right here, it looks like 100. That's actually going to be IO0. That's your GPIO0 for flashing the ESP chip. So pretty cool. You don't have to remove it out of here. You don't have to solder it. You don't have to jig it very awesome little switch i wish all the manufacturers would accidentally do this so if you've seen some of my earlier videos that well maybe be cringeworthy in some of them you do remember this etech city switch and it is a capacitive touch switch and they do have a single pole and a three-way this is the three-way switch and if you'd like to look at the video where I did an actual motion sensor connected straight to this, we'll leave the link down below. I still use that switch today and it works great. Now, if you don't want to put any switches, say you're renting and you don't want your landlord to realize you changed and did your smart switches, not saying that you should do this, but of course, you have these options. These are by Shelly, and this is the Shelly 1PM, just means power monitor. It's one relay, and you do keep your regular switch that you use on the wall that you see every day because this is just the relay. The switch actually ties into here and tells the relay to turn on and off. Now, they do make other models. This is the Shelly 2.5, and this just means it does have two relays and does have the inputs for the two switches and this one does power monitoring as well with the two channels which is pretty cool now they do have a pin header on this one it's really really small compared to say the shelly one and this shelly one pm has it just has a cap over it and you can take and put in your dupont jumper wires and you just put them in here and you could flash the esp now, the stock firmware comes with MQTT and an open API, but of course, I did a video down, we'll leave the link in the description, of how to flash these with just a web browser. You don't need to do any soldering or even mess with any little pins. You could actually flash them in the wall, what people have done. It's pretty cool. I do like the Shelly switches and being able to leave those switches on the wall is pretty cool now another really good option that i like to use this shelly one for is the garage doors because it has the terminals already for you and no you don't have to take the case off but you change this jumper here and that will change it from ac voltage to dc voltage and that way you can run it on low voltage works great for the garage door no soldering and you can put tasmoda or esp home on it pretty cool now this is another little in-wall module. This is the Sonoff Zigbee mini switch. Now Sonoff has a Wi-Fi version of this. I think it's ESP8285. It is a little hard to switch over to Tasmoto or ESP Home because you have to 
do some weird soldering or use their weird DIY tool. It does keep the same switch on the wall, pretty much the same, pretty much as a competitor for this guy here, except of course this is Zigbee, but again, they do make a Wi-Fi version. I know we gotta still mention this guy, which kind of all started the game, right? This is something I made a long time ago, but it's out of a Sonoff Basic. And this was what a lot of us started with. And if you came in after, well, we used to put these Sonoff Basics in our wall. Some, some of us would even cut them and not to mention any <clears throat> doctor names is... They would wrap electrical tape and take the board out and shove it in the wall. Not my idea of doing things, but hey, to each in their own. This allowed me to make a little power strip that we could remotely turn on and off. And I got this from the dollar store. But a lot of times we'd put lamps and everything for the Sonoff Basics. And then there was a pin header inside, which editor does it put a picture of the pin headers inside and that way you could run a wire for a low voltage switch or just a regular switch and that way you could you know put these in your wall and still have your light switches much like where the these were this kind of this replaced this or really I think I have one in production per se but other than that that's it so we'll lay the microphone down on the desk and definitely use that mouse as a reference because this will sound a little louder than they actually are in your home. So hopefully this sheds some light on which switches that maybe you should check out and buy for your home. If there are other additional smart switches that you think that we should check out, definitely leave us a comment down below. Check us out on Discord. That link is down there below. You can jump in and come chat with us and share your smart switches with us as well. Because I definitely, yeah, I do like to check out all the various smart switches as you can tell. Let's address the whole, maybe the sky is falling thing. Now, as we know previously in the past, and we even talked about it in the two year convert, that they were changing some of the chipsets in the various smart devices to non ESP chips. And basically I thought that was due to maybe the cost and they were the cheaper chipsets combined with some of the chipsets had better features and functions that allowed a manufacturer to make a cheaper product and not necessarily a bad value product it was just cheaper to get it out the door if you remember the fan controller that's the fan dimmer controller by treat life i did a whole blog post and showed it in the video with the jig and everything that was esp based well treat life came out with another fan controller without the dimmer part. And I'm sure many people ask for that, that, hey, I just want the fan control. I don't want dimmer. Inside that fan controller, and thanks to Boiler Boy on Discord, he shared some pictures of that fan controller. And there was the secondary MCU combined with a different chipset. So it totally blows that out. I was thinking that the reason why maybe they had a different chipset was to get rid of the secondary MCU and just have one chip instead of two. Saves cost, right? Well, they just jumped to another chip. I don't really know. You kind of have to do your own research. But for me, I'm going to say I'm going to get while the getting's good and get the smart switches and smart devices that I need in my home. Because I don't know who's going to change and you just never know when, and maybe one of your smart switches that you were thinking about getting, you could change chipsets one day, and well, you might be saying like I have in the past, man, I wish I would have bought a bunch of those. And well, I recently did, maybe. So before you jet, give us a like, dislike, comment, whatever it might be, YouTube loves that, and 
thank you to the Patreon subscribers. I do appreciate it. It helps bring new products and everything to the channel. And I say this all the time, but I do appreciate it really guys and gals. Thank you. And that's it. And y'all take care.